The 14600K is Intel's latest and greatest i5, but is it the right processor for you? That's what we're going to be comparing in today's video with these processors here. We're going to be comparing last gen's 13600K, AMD's 7800X3D, and Apple's M1 Max processor. These are all high performance processors, and we're going to be comparing benchmarks and pricing and wattage, all those great things with a lot of stats today to see which one is right for you. If that sounds like fun, then this video is not sponsored and the links in the description are not affiliate links. This video is completely funded with my own money and produced solely by me. If you like the video, leave a like, and if you wanna see more, hit that subscribe. Let's go ahead and get into it. The 13600K has 14 cores and 20 threads, and the 14600K has that exact same amount of cores and threads. The 7800X3D has eight cores and 16 threads, and the M1 Max has 10 cores. The 13600K has a turbo of 5.3 gigahertz, and the 14600K has that same amount. The 7800X3D has 5.0 max turbo gigahertz, and the M1 Max has 3.2. The 13600K has a max turbo on the E cores at 3.9 gigahertz, and 4.0 on the 14600K, which is one of the only differences between the processors. Here's the prices of each. I know this is quick, don't worry, we'll cover this more in depth towards the end of the video. Now we're gonna get into the good stuff, the benchmarks. But before we do, I just wanna make a quick disclaimer that the 13600K's BIOS was reset and it disabled XMP. So the 13600K is running at 4,800 megatransfers per second on the RAM, whereas the 14600K and the 7800X3D are running at 6,000 megatransfers per second on the RAM. I don't think it makes too much of a difference in the long run, but I just wanted to give you that warning before moving forward. First up, we have Borderlands 3, which is gonna be one of the only games we test on the M1 Max. You can see that the 7800X3D has the lead here at 1.6 milliseconds on the CPU latency, where the M1 Max is lagging quite behind at 19.1 milliseconds. In DaVinci Resolve, the M1 Max is leading here with a 4K 10-bit 422 clip, rendering in 65 seconds where in last place is the 7800X3D at 152 seconds. In Cinemension Single Core, the 14600K has the lead where the M1 Max and 7800X3D are tied. And in Multi-Core, the 14600K has the lead again. In Geekbench 6 Single Core, the 14600K has the lead. And for multi-core, the 14600K also has the lead at 17,000 points. Running a Time Spy benchmark here, you can see that the 14600K has the lead at 17,000 points, and the 7800X3D is in last place at 13,000 points. And for the Modern Warfare 3 built-in benchmark, the 7800X3D has a pretty commanding lead here at 375 frames per second rendered purely on the CPU. We're going to cover a few stats here in Alan Wake 2. First up, we have the CPU percent utilization, and the 14600K is using 19% of the CPU, where the 7800X3D is using 15, which is the better mark. Next up is the temperature, and you can see that the 7800X3D is running pretty hot at 61 degrees Celsius, whereas the 13600K is running the coolest. Then we have the CPU frequency, and this is just informational. There really has no bearing on performance, but the 14600K is running at that 5.3 gigahertz and 7800X3D at 4.8. And next up we have power draw, where the 14600K is using the most at 53 watts and the 7800X3D is using the least at 41 watts. That's it for Alan Wake 2, we're jumping into Cyberpunk, and with CPU utilization, you can see that 13600K is using 65% of the CPU, whereas the 7800X3D and 14600K are tied at 50%. For temperature, you can see that the 7800X3D is rocking 70 degrees Celsius, which is pretty hot, whereas the 14600K is running the coolest at 59 degrees Celsius. As for CPU frequency, 
The only difference here is that the 7800X3D is running a little lower than Alan Wake at 4.7 versus that 4.8 we saw with Alan Wake 2. And for power draw, you can see that the 14600K is using 102 watts of power. That is insane. Whereas the 7800X3D is only using 59 watts. The price of these processors is going to be a big motivator, right? So what does that look like? Here are the prices in the US and I have them all laid out here in a graph. They don't include tax and this should give you kind of a comparison of how these stack up. They all fall under that $400 range. So now let's take a look at something contextual. Let's go back to this Modern Warfare 3 benchmark where the 7800X3D is getting 357 frames per second just on the CPU alone. This is way ahead of the others. And also look at the power draw of the 7800X3D. The 59 watts in Cyberpunk compared to the Intel processors is very impressive, especially if you're in Europe where prior prices are a premium. Also in DaVinci Resolve, the M1 Max has a render time of 65 seconds in four streams of 422 4K footage, so the M1 Max is destroying all these processors in this regard. So which CPU should you get? Well, that's going to depend a lot on your use case, and it might not include any of these CPUs. I think if you're primarily gaming, you should take a close look at the 7800X3D. It offers a lot of performance with low power draw, and the cost is just a little bit higher, but you're gonna be saving money on energy. Also, you need to consider a good cooler because the 7800X3D runs pretty hot. The i5s are a little cheaper, but they're in a weird spot. They're good for gaming and they're good for et video editing, but they're not great at either of those things. As you saw with the M1 Max, it completely dominates at video editing. So if you're doing video editing primarily, I would probably consider looking into Apple processors because they're amazing right now. Or if you really want to stick with PC, you should look at the i9 series or the 7950 from AMD. That processor has a lot of cores and a lot of threads, which is great for multi-threaded tasks like video editing. Whatever you decide, do a lot of research into the product that you want to best spend your money the smartest way. Don't overspend, just stick to your budget. And if anything, I hope this video provided a little bit of help on your journey to finding the right processor for you. My name is Taylor, and if you like this video, leave a like. If you want to see more, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one.